Praise God, everybody, and welcome to the online church, the online church brought to you by Back to Basics Ministries down here in Lithonia, Georgia. And we bless God, we praise God, we thank God for this worldwide ministry, and um, thank you for joining us live and those of you who are listening by recording. We're getting a lot of people listening by recording, and we believe that these messages are helping you. We present Jesus Christ, Savior, Lord, and soon coming King. He's King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And we believe in our heart that God has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten me. He knows what he's doing. Praise God. You're going to see that in this message, this great message God has given us for you today. God has given us a wonderful message, and we're going to talk about, oh, these calamities, oh, these calamities. Man, when you look at what's going on around you and what's going on at your home, on, on your job, and some of you may not have a job, and we look at the nation and the world, you say, oh, these calamities. And, you know, if you're not saved, it's hard to hang in there, and we want you, if you're, not, if you're not saved today and you're listening, get saved today. Get saved today. You may say, well, why, Pastor Carter, should, should I get saved? I mean, God's going to be kind to me and merciful just before I die. No, 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 no. The death angel's not going to bring you a telegram or bring you a special message and say, okay, today's your day. Uh, people are leaving here by the droves, by the numbers, by the thousands, by the tens of thousands without warning. And so uh, the Bible says it is appointed unto every man once to die, but after death comes the judgment. Don't stand before God without having received Jesus Christ in this life. We preach Christ Jesus uh, crucified, buried, resurrected from the dead, and soon to come again. And God loves you so much, he's offering salvation every day. He's offering the hope of salvation. So don't put off. Don't neglect getting your soul saved. Whatever you do, don't neglect your soul. Your soul is important. You know, uh, after you die, your soul will live forever. And your soul has uh, uh, two choices. Your soul can live forever with God in heaven or in eternal damnation in hell. And hell is real, ladies and gentlemen. It is a real place. And so make your decision now while there is still time. You say, well, that's God, things are really rough. We're going to talk about these rough things today. Oh, these calamities, these rough times, oh, these challenges, these issues. I can't stand it. That's all I can stand. You some of you are doing like Popeye the sailor. That's all I can stand. I can stand no more. And spinach won't solve your issues, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Ryan, opening a can of spinach won't solve your problem. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. You need Jesus. Oh, how we need Jesus, how the world needs Jesus, how this nation needs Jesus, how I need Jesus, and how... You need Jesus. And we just listened to Richard Smallwood singing, He promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone. No matter how rough things get, Jesus promised never to leave us, never to leave us alone. And you know what? He will keep his promise. He's the promise keeper. He's the lifter of our heads. He's the rock of our salvation. He's our strong tower. He's our shelter from the storm. He's our bridge over troubled waters. He's our high and most high God. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God that he loves us so much. You may be asking, well, why then if God loves us so much, why all these calamities? Why all of these things coming against us? Ladies and gentlemen, God is love. 1 John chapter 4, God is love. And uh, everyone that loveth God knoweth God, for God is love. God loves us, but he must permit calamities to come. He must permit uh, hard times to come, and, and he is demonstrating to the world that he has all power in his hands. So get in the ark of safety. Get 
under the shadow of his wings and let God preserve you with his love. Well, bless God. We praise God and, and thank God for you. We're going to ask Brother Ryan up in Marysville, Pennsylvania to lead us in prayer. Then we're going to go right into our word today. Praise God. Good morning, church. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly today, and we want to thank you for making a new day and letting us rejoice in it. And Lord, we, we just want to ask you to please, come, we want to please, please or plead with you to you know, keep walking with us. And we, like that song said, you know, you'll, you'll never make us walk alone. You know, keep holding our hands, Lord, as long as we don't lose faith, because we walk by faith and not by sight. And Lord, we want to thank you for blessing this online ministry. Lord, we ask you to uh, come down and get, and get Pastor Carter the, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the courage to teach us your great word again today. And Lord, we want you to <clears throat> excuse me, heal, these, heal these people with this virus and heal this great nation of ours um, all across the world. And Lord, we, we just ask you to do this out of love and gracefulness. And we want to thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, we just want to say we you know, we thank you, we love you, we praise you, honor you, and worship you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen. Thanks, Ryan, and, and may God bless you and Tara and Jenna and all the people up in PA and, and, and all the people all over the nation, everyone who is listening uh, by way of the recording. And we just thank God for you. And, and just remember, God loves you all. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. Well, uh, we are looking at, at doing this ministry on Sundays and finish up before 12 o'clock noon so that those of you who have noontime commitments or, or uh, um, um, things you'd like to do, you'll be are ready that you can go and uh, you've you've been in church and and and, and we've worshiped God we've praised God we've um, w thanked God and, and we've heard a good message and and we want to give you some food to help you to grow on the food what we want to nurture you with the word and so we're looking at um, making sure that we finish up by 12 so that um, you're 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 in a good worship service for about an hour and um, the, the message uh, will touch your heart, and, and, and God will open up your heart to see who he is. So we praise God. Starting in September, uh, we want to include our communion, the Lord's Supper. So we're going to set aside. I said earlier, a couple months ago, we would do it on the second Sunday. We're going to start communion on the first Sunday of each month. And so prepare yourselves on the first Sunday of each month to have uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion with Back to Basics Ministries. And in doing this, we want you like a, on Saturday, make sure you have some grape juice and some crackers. Um, and then on Sunday morning, just, you, you know, pull it out of your, your refrigerator, a little bit of grape juice, a little bit of cracker. If you don't have cracker, use some bread. And each Sunday, I'll be doing some teachings on, on the Lord's Supper, the communion, what it really means, and then we will commune. We will fellowship with the Lord. You know, there's an anointing on the communion service, and God uh, promises healing when we do what he says for us to do. And so, praise God. Thank you again, Ryan, for the prayer. <clears throat> Thank each and every one of you for joining us, and we bless God. We praise God. Thank you for your prayers for this ministry. Uh, some time ago, uh, I wrote a book entitled The Online Church and the Great Commission. And in that book, uh, God told me to write this. The online church is the new frontier. <clears throat> the online church is the new frontier. Little did we know at the time that I wrote that book that there would be a coronavirus shutting down churches, uh, causing people to distance themselves and to take precautions, and many church doors have closed. Many may never open again, and uh, pastors are struggling uh, to see how can we get the people in, how can we minister to the people, and the answer is in Jesus Christ, pastor and pastors, And but God gave us a warning in this book uh, when he said the the uh, online church is the new frontier. And so since we are facing a new frontier, 
we've got to learn how to conquer this frontier. And one of the ways in which God is showing many of us how to conquer this new frontier and how to uh, promote the Word of God and how to get worship out there to the people and include the people in worship is through the online church. And so I thank God that I'm one of the pioneers of the online church, having started seven years ago. And God had me on the front line, I guess, to help prepare other people for these times. And so I thank God for the opportunities to mentor pastors, men and women, in the online church, how to set up their online church. And so uh, if we can help you in this area, we'll be glad to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Open your Bibles, will you please, to Psalm 57. Psalm 57. I'm going to give a shout-out to my son, Wes, and daughter-in-law, uh, Marisol. Praise God. Give a shout-out to Jackie Carter, who did a good job in the brick-and-mortar church this morning. Give a shout-out to all of you. Melanie Bias, hang in there. Praise God. Thank God for the healing. Dr. Gene Bratton, all the people in Delaware, Wilmington, Delaware. Give a shout out to people all across the nation. Elijah, all of our friends in Kenya. Praise God. You're hanging in there. Psalm 57. Let's look at the first verse. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the psalmist, this is King David, writing when he was hiding from King Saul in a cave. David was in a cave hiding from Saul. Saul was out to kill him. Saul had a, a hit squad out for David. Saul's entire army was looking for David to kill David. Why was he trying to kill David? Because David had been anointed to become the next king. God had removed his hand of mercy from Saul because Saul disobeyed God and God appointed and had Samuel to anoint David to be the next king. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil hates you. He's trying to kill you. The devil's doing everything he can to try to take you down, try to destroy you, try to destroy your marriage, your family, your children, your grandchildren, and trying to uh, rob you of your job and your well-being, your health and your peace of mind. He's robbing people of their sleep. He's out to kill. The devil has a threefold ministry. Rob, kill, and destroy. That's all he knows how to do. Rob, kill, and destroy. He gets in the churches. He gets in the pastors. He gets inside of government leaders. And they do things that will rob, kill, and destroy. And we've got to be on guard at all times. We cannot let our guard down. And so a lot of people, when they see all the destruction going on around them, some people will cave in. They lose heart. They lose their minds. And so we're going to talk today about, oh, these calamities, oh, these calamities, or to make it uh, 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 more impressive the way we really see it, Ryan, when we wake up in the morning and we see that coronavirus is still upon us and we see, we see sickness and we see job layoffs and we see food shortages and food recalls, and uh, we see the coronavirus, we see untrustworthy government, when we see lying leaders, when we see forest fires, storms, tropical storms, when we see the mortgage is due and we don't have any money, no tango donata, we, when we see uh, uh, rent is due, when we see the kids 
and they can't go to school and they, we don't know what to do with the kids, how are we going to train the kids or the school is going to open, people don't know what to do, we don't know how to plan our, our daily lives, uh, uh, we don't know whether we should go out or whether we should stay in, should we wear a mask, should we not wear a mask, and then when we see people dying like flies, all around us, uh, it makes you want to go back to bed and hide under the covers, Ryan, and you scream out, oh, these calamities. Ladies and gentlemen, I know how you feel, and David experienced that. So did Paul, the Apostle Paul. So did Moses. Can you imagine Moses? guiding three million people through the wilderness, and every day they're sinning against God, and they're hating on Moses, they're disobedient, they're doing everything they can to disrupt the government, doing everything they can to disrupt the travel. Uh, he had to deal with Dathan and Abiram and On and the rebels and, and uh, people grumbling and complaining, we don't have any meat, we don't have any water, we, don't ha we should have stayed in Egypt. At least we had food to eat. Yes, we were slaves, but we had food to eat. And can you imagine Moses having to give up, get, up, get up every morning and leave these folks? And you and I, we wake up every day and we see struggles, we see trouble on every hand, and, and it makes you uh, want to throw in the towel and say, oh, these calamities, oh, is there any help for us? Oh, marriages are going south. Relationships are going south. People don't trust one another. You don't know what news is good news. You don't know uh, what's fake news and what's good news. So many people lying. And they look you right in the face. They look right in the TV camera and lie to you. Oh, these calamities. Oh, this sickness. When is this virus going to end? Oh, these job layoffs. Now I lost my job. How are we going to eat? Oh, food shortages. You can't trust the food you're buying. This week there was a recall of shrimp. Last week a recall of veggies. You don't know what's good and what's bad. Oh, I can't trust my government. Oh, I don't know if these leaders are telling me the truth or not. Oh. The forest fires consuming all the acres, over 900 acres of land in California. Oh, two tropical storms hitting the Gulf of Mexico this week, today and Tuesday. Oh, how are the people going to survive this? Oh, my mortgage is due. I'm eight months behind in my mortgage. They're going to foreclose on me. Oh, my rent is due. Oh. No welfare checks. Oh, they cut off that $600 I was getting for an, in unemployment. And oh, the kids are off from school. What am I to do with these kids? I can't keep them in the house. I can't homeschool them. I'm not computer, uh, 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 I'm, I don't have computer expertise. Oh, I can't get out. Oh, I'm trapped. And that's the way it is, my friends, with a lot of people, not only in the U.S., but in many nations of the world. One of my friends called me from Cameroon in Central Africa two days ago. He said, um, we're still trying to do ministry here. They have a back-to-basic school over there. And uh, he said, uh, we've had blackouts for three days, no heat, no lights, no electricity for three days, but we're yet holding on. And uh, uh, people are suffering, ladies and gentlemen, all over the world. And many don't know what to do, but I've got the answer. God gives us the answer in his word. Jesus Christ is the answer. Psalm 57, verse 1 again. Be merciful unto me, O God. 
be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Ladies and gentlemen, David is crying out to God for mercy. Everybody's out to kill him. There's a bounty on his head. Saul's going to give a bounty to anyone who kills David. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of folks in the United States, there's a bounty on their heads. We've got wicked leaders who don't want to uh, 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 share leadership with anyone else and would do anything they can to stay in power. And they've got bounties on people's heads. David said, for my soul trusts in thee. David makes his declaration. Hey, my soul trusts in thee. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. This is a declaration, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what's going to get a lot of you over, going to get you in the safety zone, in the ark of safety. Hey, Dad, you don't know what to do. Hey, Mom, you don't know what to do. Hey, kids, you don't know what to do. Hey, school administrators, you don't know what to do. Hey, teachers, you don't know what to do. Hey, preacher, you don't know what to do. Hey, pastor, you don't know what to do. Hide yourself in the shadow of his wings. David said, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. Until these calamities be overpassed. Ladies and gentlemen, I could preach for 24-7 for a 30 days straight on this one verse of Scripture. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. David, the king, said the soon-to-be king. He's going to be king. He's going to replace Saul because God ordained it. But before he became king, he had to go through some stuff. And before you get your crown, ladies and gentlemen, you and I, before we get our crown, we have got to go through some stuff. And here's the way to go through. David said, in the shadow of thy wings, O God, will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I'm not going to run to the government. I'm not going to run to the Salvation Army. I'm not going to trust in the food bank. I'm not going to run to the farmer and let, see if I can glean some corn from his field. I'm not going to run to the bank and take out a big loan. I'm not going to sell myself to the credit union. I'm not going to uh, run uh, uh, to the crack house or to the whore house. I'm not going to uh, sin against God. I'm not going to run to the liquor bottle or to the, the, the dope or the, or the cannabis or, or, or the, the, the cocaine. or I'm not going to run to the vices. I'm not going to run uh, to the lesbians. I'm not going to run to the gays. I'm going to make my refuge under your wings, Lord God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when you make that quality decision, when you... Uh, specify and clarify and articulate to God and, and set your heart, fix your heart on God and let God know, let him know that you know that you're going to trust in him and not just until, until the, the, the coronavirus passes, not until you get your job back, not until you, you, you get some food to eat, not until uh, uh, those sores leave your body. But you're going to stay with God forever. Ladies and gentlemen, David made a command quality decision. He said, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. And every time a calamity came upon him, you could find David trusting in the Lord. He was not shaky. He was not wishy-washy. He, like, he was not a church hopper. He, he was not a, an online church uh, uh, investigator. Uh, see who's doing, uh, give me something soft, give me something soft, give me some, some applesauce today. I don't want anything heavy. I can't deal with anything rough because uh, my sins have gotten to me. I want to hear somebody singing some soft music. No, 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 no. You've got to make a quality decision, ladies and gentlemen, that no matter what comes, you're going to trust the Lord, and you're going to obey the Lord every day of your life.
for the duration. And I've got to make that same decision which I have made. I made up my mind that nothing, nothing is going to separate me from the love of God. I'm going to trust God. And when I go back to the time, to that time 51 years ago, <clears throat> when God saved my soul, snatched me from the very gate of hell, and gave me new life. I promised him that I would serve him. I've not always obeyed him, but I made a quality decision. And, 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 and uh, uh, when God would reveal to me a sin, I would repent of it. And, 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 and God had to humble me in a whole lot of areas of my life. But I've made up my mind. I will not turn back. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. Where can I go? Where can I go? The Bible says any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. You can't even look back at the good times you had in the nightclub, the good times you had in the whorehouse, the good times you had at the dope den, the good things you had smoking, good times you had smoking a joint or, 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 or uh, chasing someone else's spouse. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> those things with which appeared to be good, were detrimental, harmful for your soul and my soul. And ladies and gentlemen, thank God for rescuing us from that corruption. And yet, Satan still knows that he's got to get you. He wants to get you. He's out to uh, separate you from the Lord. And it takes a made-up mind like King David, a made-up mind that I will not turn back. And when troubles come, no matter uh, what comes, when COVID-20 comes, COVID-21, COVID-22, and, and COVID's cousins and aunts and uncles, nephews and nieces, when they come, I still will not quit on God. That's the kind of determination, ladies and gentlemen, that will get us saved. So many people I know, they stick with Jesus for two, three weeks. And then when, when, when the relief comes, you know, it's like taking an Alka-Seltzer for a headache. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. And then they get that relief, and then they go back and start continue drinking, continue chasing somebody else's spouse, continue lying, continue deceiving, uh, continue those works of evil. And then when the pressure's on them again, they run to God. Ladies and gentlemen, God says, how long will I strive with these people? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God is judging this nation, ladies and gentlemen. God is judging this nation. God has given America and the nations hundreds of years of the gospel. God has raised up preachers and prophets, uh, missionaries. He sent them to America and the nations. He's given us hundreds of years Actually, 2,000 years since Jesus rose from the dead, uh, telling people, get your life in order. Get your heart right with God. Repent of your sins. Repent, repent. And yet people kick God to the curb. We kick them out of our lives. We kick them out of our schools. We kick them out of our marriages. We kick them out of our homes. We make our own decisions. We do whatever pleases us. We don't want him around. We don't want him in the government. And so God is judging America and the nations right now. And this is just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, please, I plead with you, open your eyes and see. Oh, these calamities. This is just the beginning. Why? Because mankind has disobeyed God. We have sinned. You and I, we have sinned. Every one of us has sinned. And, and the wages of sin is death. And God is going to humble this nation. He's going to humble the, the nations. And so it behooves us to repent of our sins. You can't repent for anybody else, but repent of your sins. Stop the sinning. Just stop it. Run from it. Stop being angry. Stop being bitter. Stop being nasty. Stop being uh, 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 mean to people. Get rid of that mean attitude, that, that nasty attitude, that bitter attitude. Stop uh, letting those corrupt words come out of your, your mouth. I'm preaching to me too. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed 
out of our mouths, but words of edification. As I was reading in Proverbs, Proverbs 16, 17 yesterday, uh, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. Zip your lips. The wise man, the man of understanding, says very little. And so as we approach each day, as God gives us each day, and we see calamity after calamity after calamity, ladies and gentlemen, the handwriting is on the wall. It ain't going to get any better. But God is giving us the peace, the solace, the comfort in knowing that when troubles come, we can hide ourselves under the shadow of his wings. And we can stay there until the calamities be passed. God's going to deliver us from this coronavirus in his own time. A lot of people are going to have to be humbled. God is going to deliver. And God does not want us freaking out, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there's no hope. I hear so many Christians, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. OMG, stop saying that. Stop taking the name of the Lord in vain and call upon the name of the Lord and say, Lord, I put my trust in you. That no matter what happens, I put my trust in you. Let's look at Psalm 91. Psalm 91 gives us an escape from these calamities. Psalm 91, I urge you, if you can't sleep at night, Read Psalm 91 before you go to bed. Read it the first thing up in the morning. You can face each day with Jesus, with the word of God in your heart. Listen to Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm going to read Psalm 91 in, in the first person. Okay, in the first person. I'm going to read this Psalm 91. Follow me with it until we get to verse 14. Verses 14, 15, and 16 are God speaking to us. Okay, David wrote Psalm 91 and, 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 and um, gave us his viewpoint, his approach to God, how he will hide himself under the shadow of God's wings, under the shadow of the Almighty. But I want to read this, and I want to substitute the first person, meaning I, and for you. We're going to read it as though it's us reading it in the first person. <clears throat> I dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, listen to that, that third verse again. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. We're personalizing Psalm 91. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. And we see this, ladies and gentlemen. We see thousands falling because of COVID-19. thousand at our right hand and, uh, and, and at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand. But it shall not come near me. Only with mine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because I, have set, because I have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high my habitation, therefore shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Listen to that, uh, 9 and 10. Because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my habitation, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. They shall bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. 
I shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall I trample under feet. Now this is the Lord answering in verses 14, 15, and 16. And the Lord promises, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just personalized Psalm 91, and we have the confidence that God will hasten to perform his word, that as we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that means not only on Sunday, but we make up our mind, we make a determination that seven days a week, 24-7, we're going to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, that we set our hearts on Jesus, and we worship him, and we stay with Jesus, and we do not turn from him, we do not deny him, we do not run to sin, but our trust is in the Lord. It's a lifestyle, ladies and gentlemen, that we make this determination. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God's shadow will keep us. God's word will keep us. God is faithful. God will deliver us from these calamities, even though we know that these calamities are going to multiply and it's going to get worse and worse. Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, in the last days perilous times will come. This is nothing, ladies and gentlemen, compared to what's coming. So get right with God. Make your mind up now. Make your determination. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in him. Repent of your sins. Repent for putting your trust in the government and in, in friends and family and neighbors, even in your church. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people worship the church rather than worship God. No, no. Worship God. Put your trust in Jesus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest sound, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. You do this, and you watch what God will do. Don't be afraid, ladies and gentlemen. God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise God. Years ago, Wes, your mom used to sing this song so beautifully. Man, what a voice, what a voice, what a voice. Where can I go when the storms of life are raging? Who can I turn to in the time of tribulation? Is there a refuge when the storms of life are raging? I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock. Oh, where can I go? Oh, when the storms of life are raging, who can I turn to? In the time of tribulation, is there a refuge? When the storms of life are raging, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I go to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. When all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. I go to the rock. Of my salvation, I go to the rock. That's a song I wish I could sing it. I wish I could sing it. Man, that lady could really sing that song. Um, that was my feeble attempt. I don't have the uh, rights to this music, and uh, you don't want the rights to it either, but at least the words. Where can I go when the storms of life are raging? Think about it. 
every one of you is testing, is being tested by a storm. Who can I turn to in the time of tribulation? Every one of us has to face tribulations. Is there a refuge, a strong tower, a mighty fortress? When the storms of life are raging, I go to the rock of my salvation. I can't sing it the way it should be sung, but I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what, I go to the rock and I hide myself under the rock and I wait until these calamities be passed. Moses said to God, oh God, let me see your glory. Let me see your glory. Let me see your glory. God said, I'm going to pass over you, Moses. But don't look at my face. You can't look at my face and, and stand. You can't stand my glory if you see me face to face. <clears throat> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carve out a, a place in the rock. I'm going to hollow out a place in the rock. And Moses, I'm going to sit you in that carved out place in the rock. And then I'm going to pass by you, Moses, with all my glory. But don't try to look at my face. My glory is too much. My glory will blow you away. My glory will burn you up. Ladies and gentlemen, the glory of God, when you're in trouble, the glory of God will waste, burn, destroy every calamity that comes upon you. And God came by and told Moses, don't look at my face, but you can look at my rear when I pass by. And so God carved out that place of the rock and put Moses down in the rock and somebody wrote a song in the cleft of the rock I think it was uh, 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 Fanny J. Crosby in the cleft of the rock he hides my soul in the cleft of the rock that covers a dry thirsty land he hides my soul in the cleft of his love and so God will keep you ladies and gentlemen when troubles come don't be discouraged. Don't run. Don't cave in. Don't quit. Don't go back to drinking. Don't go back to drugs. Don't go back to homosexuality. Don't go back to lesbianism. Don't go back to lying and deception. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, run to the rock. Where can I go when the storms of life are raging? Who can I turn to in the time of tribulation? Is there a refuge? When the storms of life are raging, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. Yes, they rejected Jesus, but I don't reject him. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you now more than ever before. I need you in my life today more than ever, ever, ever before. I go to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. I go to the mountain. You are that mountain. You're my strong tower. You're Mount Zion. You cannot be moved. When all around me is sinking sand, when the earth is like sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. I go to the rock. Of my salvation I go to the rock he promised never to leave me and you trust in the Lord ladies and gentlemen with all your heart trust in the Lord God is faithful God is faithful he will deliver us wait on the Lord this is Pastor Carter coming to you from back to basics ministries online church and I pray that God will bless you. You do your part. You trust in the Lord. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High and abide under the shadow of his wings. And when the calamities come, when those uh, personal attacks come against you and your family, when you see a nation being under attack, when you see a nation being destroyed by, by a virus and by storms and by calamities, all these calamities, you run to the rock. And encourage others to run to Jesus. Encourage others. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell your children. Tell your uh, 
of co-workers. Jesus is the answer. Tell them there's salvation in Jesus. Nobody else can save us. Is there a refuge? Oh, when the storms of life are raging, I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the rock. That was a little bit better. God bless you all. See you next time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.